Hello and welcome to the world of professional window cleaning. I'm your host, Mark Strange. I own and operate Beautiful View Window Cleaning out of Toronto, Canada. You know, the purpose of this DVD is to teach you the correct way to clean windows and the most efficient way to clean windows right away so you're not spending months or even years forming bad habits. Now, I want to just tell you a quick story about when I first started window cleaning. Like many window cleaners out there, to get business you put out flyers and when you're first starting off you give some pretty good deals. And I had this one client uh, call up based on a flyer. She wanted a real sweet deal. So I ended up quoting $72 to clean the outside of her windows. And in the end, it took me just over two hours. So if you do the math here, I was only making around $35 an hour. And, you know, I wasn't too thrilled with that. I'd always heard that you could make $50 or more per hour cleaning windows. So anyway, several months go by client calls me back up, oh I'd like my windows clean again, can I get it done at the same price? And you know, I said, oh sure, and this little old lady, you know, what am I going to do? Say no. So off I go, I clean her windows, but something has changed. I finished her job in just under an hour. So I, I had actually gone from making $35 an hour on this job to just over $70 an hour on the same exact job. Now the only thing that had changed in those months in between the two service dates was I had observed and absorbed as much information as I could about how to clean windows properly. I took a look at what the other pros were using out there, what kind of tools, what kind of techniques they were using, uh, what little time-saving tips they had, and I had improved my technique so much in just a few months that I had doubled how much I was making on you know just this one job as an example. And so really that's what this DVD is about. It's helping you to earn better money as quickly as possible because the more windows you can clean per hour uh, the more you're going to be a step above your competition. Anyway, enough of my yakking. Let's uh, let's get on and take a look at some of the basic tools you'll need to achieve this. To start cleaning windows right away and with a limited budget you only need a few tools. You can start off by using any pail that you can find around the house. In this particular case this is a recycled cat litter pail. Next you're going to want some form of T-bar scrubber. The T-bar is basically the handle part and the scrubber is the washer sleeve that goes on top. Here's a little 10 inch. Doesn't look like much but it got me started. Next you'll need a squeegee handle. And along with your squeegee handle you're going to want a few different size squeegee channels and squeegee rubbers to do different size windows. Next you're going to want some kind of towel, preferably a lint-free towel to detail edges of the windows as well as a towel to wipe up any uh, extra spills on the windowsill and the window frames. Just a cheap terry cloth towel or an old bath towel will do. And that's pretty much it. However, you're going to be limited to the type of windows that you can clean. Basically, you're going to be able to clean any glass that's right in front of you. But what are you going to do if the glass is a little bit higher? Well, to expand on our kit, you're probably going to want some form of extension pole. This is a basic six foot extension pole uh, that you can buy. This one's from Unger. And this would probably work well for most people doing storefront. And in fact, if you're doing storefront work, I'd say why not just go for the eight foot pole. That'll probably cover you know, almost every type of storefront job you're going to have. Next, you're going to want to take a look at uh, perhaps adding another squeegee handle. This handle here is pretty you know, it's pretty decent. It'll hand you, uh, handle most situations. However, sometimes you may want some kind of a swivel type squeegee handle. This one here from Unger uh, can swivel into all different types of positions. Helps you uh, deal with windows that you can't get in front of quite squarely. Next, you might want to graduate from this simple bucket into a more professional bucket. So let's have a look at my bucket setup. Okay, the bucket that I use is a blue bucket by Polex. This actually comes in several different colors depending on your taste. And it's really quite a handy bucket. The fact it, that it's rectangular means it will accommodate your scrubber quite well. This is an 18 inch scrubber. fits in there no problem. Now you can imagine with our other bucket, uh, let's just get in here for a moment. To get our soaker uh, fully soaked, we'd have to go in one side, bring it out, and dip it into the other side. Um, a little bit too time consuming. Now, one thing I like about the Polex bucket is it comes with uh, these plastic uh, clips. You've got some clips that will hold your squeegee on the outside like this, and you've got also clips that will hold your scrubber in, which is really quite handy. 
You can even have uh, your another size squeegee held on with clips on the outside and the other side of the bucket. So you can see how just in this little combination alone, I'm pretty set up to to do a lot uh, a window cleaning, and I don't have to have all these different elements. They're all contained in this one bucket. Now there's other things that you can add to your window cleaning kit. You can take a look at some of the other scrubber sleeves. Um, you've got microfiber sleeves, which usually work quite well. You've got a combination of microfiber and scrubbing strips, like on this micro tiger sleeve. And you've even got this heavy duty sleeve called a porcupine sleeve. Now if you take a look at it closely, don't know if you'll be able to see it, but besides the, uh, the regular scrubber fibers, you also have these little tiny uh, uh, they're like nylon uh, scrub bristles. This is really handy for getting really tough dirt off and you know such as pollen, cigarette smoke, breaking down the uh, cigarette smoke stains and whatnot. Very handy. Now along with this you're going to probably want to have a tool belt and tool belts can be uh, quite handy for so many things. The first thing I like to make sure I have on my tool belt is this item known as a bucket on a belt. With this item here on your tool belt you can carry your scrubber and one or two squeegees as well as a pocket scraper will fit inside the slot here. That way when you're climbing up ladders or anything you, you can work hands free. You know you can get up the ladder, you can make sure that you're holding onto the ladder properly, you've got your tools at your side and then once you get up to the window then you can pull your tools out and start working on it. Um, another th other thing I like to have is this hammer holster. I like to use this and carry a smaller detailing squeegee with me. A smaller uh, squeegee can also be handy for doing French paints. Next on the other side you're going to want to have a, uh, a window scraper that is a razor. I carry this nice six inch Triumph. As well I like to keep a spray bottle in this pouch. This is handy so that you don't have to keep going to the bucket to get your uh, scrubber uh, wet with your solution. You can uh, actually go around the house or go around the commercial property and just spray your windows with your solution and scrub away and squeegee away. Really handy. Now as far as your cleaning solution goes, there's a whole big debate among window cleaners. It's actually quite a funny uh, little debate. Uh, they call it the soap wars. Whether or not to use uh, dish soap or wa washing up liquid as it's called in some places or to use professional soap. Really I think starting off you can go either way is you know nothing wrong with using dish soap it may look a little unprofessional but it does work and usually in a bucket like this I'd fill it about half full which is about three gallons and about two or three squares of the dish soap is fine as far as uh, whatever designer brand you buy just follow the instructions for mixing to get the proper mix so as you see everything I've shown you here uh, is pretty much you know I think you could get it for under you know two hundred dollars uh, US you mean under $200 uh, Canadian or Australian dollars and you know you're pretty much set for just about any type of window cleaning of course if you're doing residential two-story three-story uh, houses or even two-story three-story uh, commercial buildings you're going to need to invest in extension ladders and maybe some longer poles most extension pole uh, manufacturers have poles that go up to about 30 feet other than that, if you want to go any higher, then we're talking about either hanging off the side of a building or using water-fed poles, uh, you know, technology that's been around for you know a decade or so. Um, but we're not going to get into that on the, this DVD. Anyway, as you can see, you can start off with the very basics and start window cleaning today if you wanted to. You can invest a little bit more and be ready for just about any other challenge. And later on in this DVD, we're going to take a look at some of the other specialty tools that you can add to your toolbox.
Anyone entering the world of professional window cleaning needs to learn one very valuable lesson first. That is how to clean a window in the most basic way but streak free. You know, I remember when I first got out of high school, my first job was painting houses. I was working for this company and this employer of mine, he would never let me use the paint roller. Always would hand me the brush, make me cut into the corners, do all the trim, paint doors, just using the brush. And it used to drive me crazy. I'd complain all the time. But he would tell me, he said, Mark, anyone can use a paint roller, but it takes a real professional to use the paint brush properly. And, you know, it took me a little while to, you know, for that to click in. And, you know, years later, I really appreciate that bit of advice. And I guess the same analogy in window cleaning is, uh, you know, anyone can use a scrubber and scrub a window fine. But it takes a true professional to do good quality squeegee work. So we're going to take a look at the basic principles of streak-free window cleaning. Now, my definition of a streak really is any time you've uh, cleaned a window, you walked on to the next window, the next window, but you've left any kind of cleaning solution on the glass to dry on its own, that will show up later on as a streak. It could be a trail line from the edge of your rubber somewhere down the middle of the window. Could be a little drip from the top of the uh, frame. Could be a little smudge down here that you didn't notice because you were just going a little bit too quick or you weren't using the light properly to take a look at the glass. So how do we use a squeegee properly? Well before we learn how to use it, we have to learn how to make sure our tool is in proper shape to do the job. And one of the most important parts of any squeegee is the rubber. And taking a look at the rubber, you're going to want to take a look for any types of little nicks or any little worn out spots which will cause water to be left behind. The next thing you want to do is take a look down the line of your channel. Is it straight? Is there any little bends in it? Because a bent uh, channel obviously is going to leave little sections of water here and there. Once you've determined that your tool is in pretty good shape, you have to learn how to you know, use it properly. Now, holding a squeegee handle, it basically comes down to whatever you're comfortable with. You don't want to grip the handle hard because, you know, you're going to be working all day and you don't want to have your muscles all tensed up. So you, you want a nice relaxed grip. Some people actually will put their index finger right here to help control the squeegee. For myself, I change my hand position all the time, so I don't even really think about it. The next thing we need to learn is what is the proper angle to hold this to the glass. Now most squeegee handles are designed in such a way as to hold the, the channel on the rubber at approximately 30 degree to, uh, to the handle itself. So it's already got a 30 degree angle to it. And next, when holding the squeegee to the glass, if you bring your hand back so that you're the distance between the glass and your knuckles is anywhere from an inch to two inch. That will increase that angle to about 45 degrees. And that 45 degree angle is what, what is the op optimal angle you want that the edge of the uh, squeegee rubber to be on the glass for removing as much solution as possible. Once you learn you know, that, it, it actually becomes muscle memory. You start to do it automatic. But for the first little while, I just want you to be conscious about holding it a good, you know, inch to two inch away from the glass to give you that proper angle. Next is you want to apply just enough pressure to remove the water, but not too much pressure that you could actually cause your squeegee channel to bend. And that's about it for holding the, the squeegee. Now let's take a look at actually cleaning the glass. Most people using a squeegee for the first time, they'll soap up their window and it doesn't matter if they want to do a straight down pull or side to side but usually they just simply apply the squeegee to the glass they pull down and go a few times and don't really think about you know what you know kind of method they're using to squeegee the glass so they'll take a look afterwards and you know they might see a run down here they might have some drips coming down over here and oh a big pool of water down there because they were you know they really don't know what they're doing and well we can't have that because even if they see it and they want to take care of it they're rubbing here they're touching up there they're fixing over here you know and the more time you're spending 
with your rag on the glass, well, you may as well not have used this in the first place. So let's take a look at the proper way to use a squeegee to remove the solution. Again, we're going to lather up the window. Now, to do the same top-down squeegee method the proper way, the first thing I want to teach you about is to pre-cut the top edge of your window. That is to take the, you can either take the tip of your squeegee blade, about an inch of it, just pull it straight across, or you can actually use a clean bit of lint-free towel and do that as well. And you could do also your sides, depending on what technique, squeegeeing technique, sometimes I only do the pre-cutting of the top and the side, sometimes I'll do both sides. But anyway, now we're ready to do the squeegeeing. Now that we've got a dry edge and we've got a dry squeegee blade, we can put this right up into the corner. Now we want to bring the right, hand, right end of the squeegee blade down on a slight angle. This will help pull water away from the edge and bring it into the center of the glass, which is where we want it. A little quick wipe of the squeegee blade. We're going to overlap the water line by about an inch and a half. Again, we want that right side to be tilted down slightly. If we came down and our squeegee was straight or the right side was up, we'd actually, when we're pushing the water, the water would actually ride up the blade, causing a trail line. So by holding it down on this kind of an angle, again, brings the water down. And then finally we do a last pull, and there we go. And when we take a look at the glass now, I only see just a little bit of water there. And even though I don't see a water along the top or the sides, I usually like to give it a quick little insurance detailing. So, we've got that there, that there, and we're done. There's no water left anywhere in the glass. I can confidently move on to my next window. Now let's do the same thing, but side to side. Slightly different this time. I'm going to pre-cut again. And this time I'm just going to pre-cut this side here. Now, there's a, an expression in squeegeeing technique called your leading edge. And if we're doing a side to side motion, this leading edge would be the top of your squeegee blade. We want that, just like we did on down here, we want it slightly angled. This will pull water down from the top of the glass over to the edge. Now we're going to overlap, and again our leading edge goes first on an angle. Once more we finish off this window with our leading edge going first. Learning how the leading edge works to your advantage will help you in all the different advanced techniques that we're going to learn. And you'll learn how to uh, control the water, make it do things that you want it to do. Obviously gravi gravity works to bring the water down on its own. But when you learn how to use a squeegee properly, you can make the water go wherever you want. So anyway, that's it for basic uh, streak-free window cleaning. Let's take a look at now at some of the more advanced techniques. So the first of the advanced squeegeeing techniques I want to teach you is the upside down L method. Normally we think of an L, capital L, as a line down this way, line in the bottom. But we're going to do it upside down, so we're going to rotate that L. The bottom of the L would be here, and then the side of the L is there. That's basically the pattern that we're going to be tracing with our squeegee. So let me give you a demonstration of how that would work. Let's lather up our little tutorial window here. Get it all nice and soapy. Grab our squeegee. In this particular instance, I'm using a 12-inch wide channel. And we'll cut into the top, or pre-cut if you will, like I've shown you earlier on the DVD, and pre-cut down one side. That gives us a nice dry edge to start. So we're going to trace right across the top here, into the corner, and we're going to go down the side, just like that there. Give our blade a quick wipe, come down further down the window with a little bit of overlap, and our leading edge out and then straight down. Now for this last little bit we don't have that much uh, to trace an actual L shape so we're just going to basically 
flip the squeegee around like that, and we're done. All you need to do now, wipe your sill, wipe your edge. There you go. There's the L method, the first of the more advanced methods you'll see window cleaners doing out there in the real world. Now let's, uh, I'm going to do it one more time, just a little bit quicker, and we don't bore you too much. Now that you know what we're going to do, you can quickly follow along. Cutting the edge, cutting the edge, white, white. And there you go. We're done. Very little detailing left to do. But not bad to always remember to do it as a little piece of insurance. That way you always have a happy customer, no soapy water running down for them to find later on. Anyway, no uh, lesson would be complete without actually taking a look at this method being used in the real world. So let's have a look at uh, some real window cleaning jobs where I've used this method. Now I'd like to teach you one of the techniques that you're going to see people in the business doing day in and day out in commercial glass, residential glass, it doesn't matter. It's probably one of the most popular professional techniques out there. Some people call it the S method, others call it the swirl or the super swirl, but basically this is how it works. Soak down our window, grab our squeegee. We can pre-cut or not pre-cut. I like to pre-cut as much as possible and then we're going to what happens generally this is probably about the most popular approach is to go up into one corner bring it over to the other corner come down a little bit instead of going all the way down you come back up you overlap here come down a little bit then back up again overlap overlap so here we're doing like an S swirl method until we get down to the bottom basically is what it comes down to. Now I said generally speaking you see a lot of people cutting into the, the top corner. You don't really have to do it that way. You can cut in just about anywhere and I'll show you some of the other popular places where people cut in. This time I'm not even going to pre-cut. Now I've been a window cleaner for a few years now and uh, I've learned uh, quite a number of uh, techniques, different techniques and tips of the trade and some window cleaners, other window cleaners that I've talked about in the trade swear by cutting in at the top, in the middle. So they'll go up into the corner, come down, back up to that top, bring it to this edge, come down, until they get down to the bottom. And some like to close out at the bottom, like I showed you on the first pass, and some actually like to close out at the side. It's really up to you and what you find works best for you. And I'll show you one last popular way to start off your S method or swirl method. I see a lot of window cleaners doing this as well. They'll actually start at the bottom, work their way up, round, all the way down. And basically they just have the center to worry about. And there you go. 
There you have the S method. And as usual, let's go take a look at me doing this kind of method out in the real world. Okay, so now that we've seen the S method, uh, you probably noticed that as much as it's a pretty efficient way to clean windows, it's not so great when we're looking at smaller pane windows. Even a window such as this, I, I was doing a fair bit of back and forth motion before I got down to the bottom of the window. And there are actually more efficient ways to tackle a window of this size. And uh, one of my favorite methods actually is called the N method. The N method, if you can picture the letter N starting at the bottom left, up to the top left, bottom right, up to the top right. That's the pattern that we're going to trace. So we're going to do it in reverse. We're going to start up there, down there, there, and done. It seems kind of complicated, but when you see it actually performed, you're going to see that it's actually pretty simple. Let's get ourselves all nice and lathered up there. Now we're going to pre-cut the top like usual, but instead of pre-cutting the left-hand side, in this particular case I'm going to pre-cut the right side, because that's the first side that we're hitting. And so we come down to the bottom right, up to the top left, straight out of squeegee, down, and we're done. So as you can see, it wasn't really complicated at all. It's pretty straightforward. Now, one thing to note, though, is that many window cleaners out there will actually do a slightly modified version of this. I don't think you'll ever see them tackle it quite like the way I just showed you. I just wanted to show you that way just so you can get the principle of tracing out the end backwards. Normally what you're going to see is this kind of end method. Cutting into the top left corner, down to the right, and there you go. Now I did that kind of quickly to show you how a tradesperson would normally do that in the field, but if you were sharp enough, you probably notice something. When I came up to do the top left, I didn't have to go all the way up to the top corner. And now I'm going to do it slowly, and I'm going to explain what's going on here. Now that we're doing it a little bit slower, let me show you what's going on here. So we cut into the top left-hand corner and across. Now our, our soap line is actually here instead of the top corner. So we continue across like that, around there, and we twist, and we're done. We didn't have to go all the way to the top. It was a little bit easier for me to twist my hand and then come down and do the finishing move. So as you can see, very simple move and a lot faster than doing this kind of motion and a lot easier on the wrist in the long run. Anyway, let's go and uh, take a look at some commercial and residential windows where I use the end method.
Well, so far I've shown you a few methods of cleaning the same window and showed you which uh, you know could be considered a beginner method, uh, like the L, the, or the upside down L method, to more advanced methods like the S and the N. What if you take that same window and you turn it on its side? It's actually even a more efficient method of cleaning this same size window, same size window that we've been cleaning through all these little demonstrations. And this is the U method. Now, if you picture the letter U, let's just draw it on here, starting at the top right, or sorry, the top left, and then the bottom, bottom corner, and then to the top right. Take that U shape and turn it on its side so that we have it like this. That's the pattern we're going to trace with our squeegee, and you're going to see how efficient this method is on a window that is wide but not too high. First of all, you want to make sure that whatever squeegee you're going to be using, the width of the blade is more than half of the height of the window. So I'm going to cut in the top as per usual and one side. Pull the squeegee across into the corner, down to the bottom right corner, and there you go. That's it, we're done. No back and forth, side to side, no zigzagging looping up and down. Very, very efficient method. I don't even think I need to show you any kind of real world methods for that. But I will show you the U method one or two more times just so you can have a burnt in your memory. You ever come across a window like this, this is the most efficient method of getting it cleaned. Cut, cut, straight across, down to the corner, there you go. One more time? Okay. Hopefully this will be burnt into your retinas by the time you finish watching this DVD. And you'll be impressing your friends in no time. And hopefully making some pretty good money. And there you go. The last advanced squeegeeing technique I want to teach you is something known as the Z method. Now sometimes I'll be on a job and I'll have like a lot a lot of large windows, and so I'll be using my large squeegee, like my 18 inch, or maybe even larger. And suddenly I'll come across a window that's just the same height as all the other windows, except it's a lot more narrow. Now I could grab my small squeegee, um, but that might take a little time switching up tools if I really want to go quickly. So quite often I'll maintain using my 18 inch squeegee, but what I'll actually do is a technique known as the Z method. Now let's trace out the Z for a moment. Starting at the top left, you've got one point here. Second point, top right, third point, bottom left, and the last point, bottom right. So this is the pattern that we're basically going to trace with our squeegee. So let's soap up our window. Do a quick pre-cut. Now starting at the top left, we'll tilt in to the top right. We'll bring the squeegee down on an angle, all the way down, and then we'll straighten out the squeegee, finishing off at the bottom right. So as you can see, the Z method is really quite simple. And in actual fact, quite often when you're doing doors in residential properties, even some commercial properties, you'll have a door that's maybe anywhere from about two and a half feet to three feet wide, uh, six feet tall perhaps, or a little bit longer. And then on the sides, you'll have same height windows, but a lot more narrow. This is when you can uh, use this technique. So let's show it one more time. Just to drill it into the mind. Cut the top, cut down one side, wipe our blade. So tilt into the top right. Carefully bring it down on an angle. Once we get down to the bottom, straighten it out, and there you go perfectly clean window. Just do a little detailing and that's it. We're done. Now let's take a look at uh, a couple of examples of how you can do this. One with a large residential window and also with a small French pane window. You can also use the Z technique on that.
Now that we've learned some of the more advanced squeegeeing techniques, the next big challenge is to learn how to clean high windows using extension poles. Now you may be thinking to yourself, why use an extension poles? Don't we have ladders? Well, yeah, sure we do have ladders, and more often than not you're not going to be able to avoid using them. However, there are some cases where using the ladder and setting it up several times around a property can actually waste a lot of time. Uh, other scenarios where setting up a ladder is just impossible. You may have obstacles in front of this window such as a tree or a bush and you can't safely uh, set up the ladder so you're going to have to bring out the extension pole and this means learning how to use an extension pole. It can be a little bit tricky at first but don't worry I'll walk you through it. Now one of the first things I want to do is make sure that my tools are really up to the job and I mentioned at the early part of this DVD about checking your rubber or any nicks and worn out uh, spots on it. Never is it more true than when you're doing pole work because you're not going to be up close and personal with the glass. So you want to make sure your tools are in tip top shape before you actually even attempt to clean it. The next is you want to make sure that your pole and your squeegee uh, work well together. In this particular case I'm using an Unger pole with a locking cone tip and a Unger squeegee which perfectly suited to work together. That way I can ensure that this tool is not going to spin on the, the uh, pole tip. I'm going to have good control with it. Also, I like to use a swivel type squeegee handle. Now, squeegee uh, handles that have swivel actions on it like this are very handy in cases where, let's say, you can't get up straight underneath the glass because of some kind of obstacle on the ground. Well, what you may have to do Let's say, for instance, we have a small tree or a bush on the left side here, and we have to approach it from the right. Well, we can actually set up our, our squeegee to swivel in such a way that we can approach it from the right and still clean the left side of that window. You may also wonder, how do we approach cleaning the glass if we can't pre-cut? Like, you know, every time I showed you how to do a, an advanced squeegeeing technique, I showed you about this pre-cutting or cutting into to the corners uh, to bring the water out from the edge. You can't quite do it the same way with a pole. Well, here's how you do it. One thing to know, when we're scrubbing high windows, the last thing we want to do is push our scrubber hard up into the top window seal because what happens is we can actually push water underneath that seal which will bleed down later on. So what I like to do is take my swivel scrubber and have it on its end because I find that the ends of the scrubber sleeves usually don't hold quite as much water as the middle. And so pulling that straight across, we're wetting the window but not pushing up water underneath that seal. So now that we've finished scrubbing the window, we switch over to our squeegee and I usually like to start up at the top left. And what we'll do up here is we'll give it a couple of little pulls to pull any water down from the seal then tilt the squeegee off to one side and drag it right across pulling water down from the top. Now we'll drop the right side down and we'll squeegee down the edge of the window just doing a straight pull. A couple of taps on the glass will remove any loose debris off the squeegee blade or any excess water and now we're going to overlap and pull down. Now we go up to the top, one last couple of pulls around that seal, straight down, and we're done. Now observing the edge of the windows, I can see that there's hardly any detailing to do. So let's take a look out in the field at some of these uh, windows that I've been doing lately and uh, some of the pull work I've been doing. Also notice some of the swivel action that I've needed to perform in order to get hard to reach windows.
some specialty squeegees out there. Basically they achieve the same purpose. They're from two different manufacturers and I want to take a look at each one separately first. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is the Unger vice versa. Basically this tool has a scrubber on one side and a squeegee on the other. Quite often you use this tool on a pole. This will allow you to scrub a window down that's pretty high up and just flip it around and squeegee down the glass. This is very handy on those hot days when you're afraid that if you, you know, scrub down a window, bring the pole down to switch tools, that the window may dry out. Another good thing is that you can actually do several windows and uh, without having to bring your pole down. Now this, like I said, this is the younger, and in this particular case I'm using a 12 inch channel with a 10 inch scrubber. Now a larger version of this, but from a different manufacturer, is what's known as the backflip. So the backflip is made by Ederay, and in this particular instance it's an 18 inch scrubber. Now it normally ships with a 20 inch channel, but I've put a 22 inch channel because I like to cover a lot of ground. And it basically works the same, scrub the glass, flip it around, and then squeegee the glass. Now there is one main difference between these two tools, uh, that being the younger versus the Ederay backflip. The Ederay backflip actually has a couple more uh, features to it. One of the better features to it is that the fact that the squeegee part extends a little bit further, which helps you get over deep ledges. Another thing is that the tool actually comes apart and can be used separately, whereas the younger vice versa, what you see is what you get pretty much. You can make a few adjustments to it uh, to make the uh, squeegee extend a little bit further, but it's pretty much an all-in-one tool. This can be together as a backflip, it can be separately if you want to do, you know, you can just carry around and do all your storefront work just using this tool. You can also put the two tools combined together in the same direction like this so that you can scrub and squeegee at the same time. Mind you, this technique takes a lot of practice and the results aren't always 100%, so I hardly ever use it like that. But anyway, let's go take a look in the field, some residential and also some commercial properties, and let's see these tools put into action. After you've been professionally window cleaning for a while, you're going to find that the standard squeegee handle angle is not always optimum for some of the windows that you have to clean. Like, let's take for instance a window that uh, perhaps you have to reach over a large bush or inside an office you have to reach over desks and you have to hold the pole pretty much horizontal. Having that angle it's really kind of tricky to work with so quite often 
I'll reach for a zero degree handle. And there's a couple zero degree handles that are quite good on the market. The first one I want to look at is the Contour Pro. Now, see, there, there you have a, a zero degree. It's just basically a straight, there's, there's absolutely no angle to it. However, the Contour Pro is a little bit more involved than that. By flicking the switch, it'll actually go back to a regular angled squeegee. And it also has a spring mechanism in it. So when putting a little extra pressure on the glass, you can actually get it to close out to a zero degree. It comes in quite handy for many situations. And it also swivels, which is quite handy when you're using it with a pole. And like I said, this is, you know, you'd use this whenever you want to reach over horizontally and, uh, you know, squeegee that way. Now one thing to note is when you're using a zero degree handle, you have to create that optimum angle of the rubber to the glass yourself. Don't rely on the handle to give you that angle. Now another brand of zero degree handle out there is the Unger, the Unger swivel lock handle. And it's quite handy. It has a lock mechanism to keep it um, straight as far as the swivel goes. It also has a dial on it so you can create tension so that you can, you know, form certain swivel angles as well. You can have it fully loose. Now, a good use for this being fully loose is that you can stick it on the end of a pole and you can actually fan windows. You can do that S method back and forth, right from the top to the bottom of a window, really quite easily. So anyway, let's go take a look at the zero degree angle out there, see some of the action. So here's how we fan using a zero degree handle. Make sure the swivel is in the loosest position. Cut up to the top corner, bring it across to the other top corner. We can bring it right down to the bottom and come swoop back up, down to the other side. And now all we have is a center area to clean up. And there you go, we're done. We've just fanned a window using a zero degree handle on a pole. Now I've talked uh, when examining a couple of the other tools about trying to get over the window ledge. Sometimes you have a deep ledge, especially on high windows. And there's actually a tool out there that is that it's pretty much designed specifically for that. And that's called the ledger. Makes sense, right? Now here's a small ledger. This one will actually extend about seven inches over the ledge. You can see the extension of that. But you can actually buy this tool to extend as much as 22 inches. So if you have this on a pole, and then you've got your squeegee angling over and extending over that ledge, it comes in handy for you to be able to squeegee right down to the bottom of the glass. Uh, if you don't use one of these tools, uh, and you're not careful, you'll actually see you have, might have as much as an inch to maybe even two inches of water at the bottom of your window. Um, you might not notice it right away, but once that dries, it's going to look pretty horrible. So you're going to want to either get a tool like this, like the ledger, or some other uh, similar tool out there. Always make sure you get right down to the bottom of the glass. After squeegeeing uh, your window, after you're doing a couple, it's a good idea to take a few steps back and that way you can see it from a distance whether or not you're getting all the way down. So, like I say, the ledger tool pretty much does what it's called. I want to show you a couple of interesting tools from a company called Wagtail. These are both combination uh, scrubber squeegee tools. It's slightly different. The first one is the, the older version, which is known as the flipper. 
It's basically a, it's got an angled squeegee handle with a loose pivot to it. On the front of the tool, you've got a scrubber pad that drops down to reveal a rubber squeegee blade, which you then squeegee the window. And it, basically, it works like this. You can scrub down the window, and with just a flick of the wrist, the scrub pad drops down. Now you squeegee the window. And as you see, the tool is pivoting on the way down, pretty much on its own, needing very, very little wrist action. And that was a pretty good tool uh, to begin with. But they made some improvements on uh, their designs, and now they have a tool that's known as the Whirlwind. That was the Wagtail Flipper. This is the Whirlwind. What I like about the Whirlwind is that it's got a smaller squeegee channel. As well, it will accommodate other squeegee channels from some of the popular companies like Unger or Ettore. You can also use your own brand of rubber if you, you know, you don't have to use the Wagtail rubber that comes with it, but the Wagtail rubber is still pretty good. And this scrubber pad that they have on it, it's a lot different than the flipper pad. This one here is a more, it's a microfiber. So it's going to be tougher on those uh, windows that are very dirty. It also holds a lot more water. And the, the underside of the pad is also great for lubricating the uh, glass. So you actually need to use less water because as you're going down, this, the underside of the, this pad here is continually uh, lubricating down your window for a nice squeegee glide. Now let's take a look at this tool in action. Okay, you start off by giving a little bit of a flick to get the scrub pad in the correct position. Scrub down the window. Okay, now we let the pad drop down. And we pivot side to side. Twisting the pole as we go down allows this tool to pivot. And there we go, we're done. No matter how well you develop your squeegeeing technique, you're still going to have to deal with the excess water that you've taken off the glass. And you're going to have to deal with it in two ways. One is, how do you deal with the, the water that's dripping on the sill, or any excess water that got on the side of the frames? And usually uh, window cleaners will use, you know, terry towels such as this, or a small bath towel. Some even use sea sponges. And they'll basically give the sides of the, the, the frames a nice wipe, wipe down the sill, sometimes in between sliding tracks if they're sliding windows, the wipe in between there. Like I said, you know, you can use a terry towel, sponge, uh, sea sponge, uh, small bath towel. I've even experimented a little bit with uh, synthetic sham, such as this, and this can uh, absorb quite a lot of water. The last area that you have to worry about uh, with the excess water is any bit of the glass that still has maybe a little trail of water along the edges. And in that case, you're going to want to use a towel such as a huck towel or surgical towel. These towels are uh, specifically designed to be quite absorbent. They're also very uh, good at uh, not putting lint or anything back on the glass. And you basically just get your finger or one or two fingers up into the towel and go right into the edge of the window close to the frame. And there you go. Now you may have noticed uh, that when I'm detailing the top, the bottom of my towel is swinging. And if, it, if this towel was damp, it could actually make a little bit of a mess on the glass. So what I like to do sometimes is I'll just flip it back on the other side of my arm. That way the only part that's touching the glass is where I'm detailing. Like so. Another great detailing towel is a product known as the scrim. The scrim is basically a huge piece of linen which is extremely absorbent and with it being so large, one of these things can actually last you all day. And usually most window cleaners will just throw it over their shoulder 
and uh, walk around uh, the properties. And this thing will actually kind of, you know, if it's a pretty mild day, will actually dry as you're moving along through the jobs. But basically, you're going to want to double it up so it's more absorbent. Once again, throw the towel on the back side of your arm and do your little detailing. Now, with this being a big towel, sometimes I'll actually hold the bottom edge and do my little detail in. This detail towel, the scrim, can also be used slightly damp and when mixed with a little bit of uh, alcohol and distilled water, you can actually use it on its own to clean windows uh, without leaving anything behind. So it's really quite handy. Now you may come up with your own type of towel to use uh, for your wipe ups and your detailing, but basically it comes down to two things. Anything that you're going to use for the wipe up, it doesn't matter whether or not it's lint free but you just basically want it to absorb as much water as possible. As far as detailing the glass, whatever you use, whether it be a surgical towel, huck towel, the scrim, or even a microfiber cloth, just you know, pick one that is as lint-free as possible. Whenever you're cleaning windows on a regular basis, such as storefront work, you'll find that using a scrubber and a squeegee are probably all you're going to need uh, to deal with some of the dirt that you're going to deal with there. However, when you're doing houses or even commercial properties once a year or once or twice a year, you're going to find that they're quite dirty and you might need a little extra uh, scrubbing power or even scraping power, you know, talking razor blades here. Uh, one of the methods I use for residentials when the window is a little bit more dirtier than usual is to use a white non-abrasive scrub pad. And sometimes I have to do the whole window, sometimes I'll just do whatever area is more soiled. Um, but more often than not, you're going to have to resort to using a scraper, and that is a razor. And there's a few different types and sizes on the market. Here's an example of a 6 inch scraper. This is made by Triumph, and it's the MK3 scraper. Now, it's, it's got a pretty, you know, it's a straight angled scraper, so when scraping a window, you have to create the angle yourself. A scraper such as the Ettore Scrape Master has got an angle built into it. And this is very handy for when you're using this on a pole. Because when you've got a window in front of you, you can create the optimum angle to scrape off debris. But when you're dealing with windows high up, it's nice to have that angle already set for you. And also, you might want to carry around a little pocket scraper. These are handy, especially when you just have like a couple of little bits of debris, maybe a little bit of tape, or a couple of paint flecks there that you just want to get off. You don't have to do the whole window. You wouldn't want to do a whole window with such a small scraper. And next I want to talk to you about the actual approach to when to use a scraper. Now more often than not, when I walk up to a window, I can judge pretty much if I'm going to need to use a scraper at all. But usually what I like to do, uh, whenever possible, is soak down the whole window, then squeegee it. And if I see any debris still on there, what I'll do is I'll take the corner of my scrubber and I'll just soak down a few spots that need the scraping. And I might pull out my pocket scraper like this and just get those couple of spots like that. That way I'm not wasting time scraping the whole window. But sometimes you'll walk up to a window and you can see it's totally covered in hard to remove debris. In which case you have to scrape the whole window. So we start off by scrubbing it with our soapy solution. This will help the scraper glide nicely. And you want to pretty much scrape in the one, one direction only. You don't want to be going all different directions. Uh, and usually what I start off with, because it might be hard for me to, you know, like if I'm going to do a vertical, it might be hard for me to start off at the bottom. This is the only time I'll actually do it in an opposite direction. So now I've given myself a nice clean edge to start from, and I don't have to worry about getting down low. Now I can scrape the rest of the glass, just like that. Now you don't want to scrape back and forth because when you scrape forward, you lift up debris and when you pull back, if you're pulling back, you can actually get debris trapped underneath the blade and you can actually end up scratching the window. So you just want to do one stroke in any direction. And another thing you might want to make a note of whenever you're scraping a window, so when you start off at the side, let's get our start point. When you start off at the side edge, you don't want to go up straight. You actually want to go on an angle inwards to the glass. That will stop the edge of the razor blade from actually digging into the seals or the wood or whatever the edge is on your window. So you're actually bringing it up on a slight edge 
and then all the rest, you can do nice and straight. And then on the last one, again, you want to angle it slightly towards the inside of the glass, and that'll stop the blade from running in to the side of the window and the seal, causing damage. Now all these scrapers pretty much have some kind of cap, safety cap, on them. So make sure you use them so that when you're carrying around your scraper you don't accidentally grab it and grab the blade. And your pocket scraper is usually retractable up and down. To wrap up our discussion about scrapers and uh, using them on glass, it's important to note that uh, professional window cleaning scrapers such as this, uh, they won't scratch glass on their own. There is, however, an existing condition on some heat strength in glass known as fabricating debris. This is basically microscopic debris that has been left on and actually kind of like baked onto the glass during the manufacturing process. Like I said, it's microscopic and you can't even see it. However, when running a scraper over fabricating debris, you can dislodge uh, these little nuggets, if you will, and dislodging them and dragging them across the, the glass, as you can imagine. It's going to cause a few scratches. And this is a very serious situation that you, uh, any window cleaner can get themselves into. Now, I'm not going to go into a big, uh, you know, what to do in this situation. I'm not the expert. But what I would suggest anybody to do if they're going to get into professional window cleaning is to go up to stopscratchglass.com. This is a very handy website run by Dan Fields. He's uh, pretty much the uh, expert in the window cleaning field um, on how to deal with scratch glass situations. Um, so like I said, go up there, get educated, and then educate your clients as well. And that's it for uh, using razors. Okay, so there you have it. There's a full DVD of information. I, I don't think I could cram any more information on just one single DVD. You've learned about the basic tool setups. You've learned squeegeeing techniques, how to do some pretty fancy stuff using pole work, as well as taking a look at some of the specialty tool items that are, exist today, help you out getting those windows clean. Anyway, you have all the information. Now I wish you the best of luck. Practice your technique. Go out there and make some money. Bye, everyone. Thank mm -hmm. you.